dear students this is our 29th lecture on medicinal chemistry and today we will discuss about sedatives and hypnotics both these uh, type of uh, drugs sedatives and hypnotics uh, they are used as central nervous system depressants whereas uh, their application is uh, different uh, for different types of uh, diseases uh, for example sedatives uh, they reduce excitement tension and produce relaxation in the patient whereas uh, hypnotics they produce uh, sleep similar to our natural sleep so uh, they are generally given uh, to the patients which are suffering from insomnia whereas uh, uh, sedatives they are given to patients who are uh, suffering from anxiety uh, so basically uh, both these uh, can act as anti-anxiety agents anti-convulsants also then they are also uh, act as muscle relaxants, uh, muscle relaxants because uh, they will produce relaxation in the human body then they can also be used as general anesthetics then pre-anesthetic medication uh, is also covered under these types of drugs then antipsychiatrics also covered under uh, sedatives and hypnotics and both these uh, sedatives and uh, hypnotics they may be present in the same drug both these uh, actions may be present in the same drug because at when we give a lower uh, dose for these drugs then these will act as sedative whereas when higher dose of these drugs is given uh, that will act as a hypnotic now uh, as far as classification of these types of drugs is concerned uh, based on their chemical structure they can be uh, classified as uh, barbiturates so uh, these are synthesized from organic barbiturates so that is why these are called as barbiturates then if the drugs are having uh, diazo uh, benzodiazepine ring present in them these are called as benzodiazepines then uh, open chain nitrogen containing compounds uh, they will be called as acyclic hypnotic containing nitrogen whereas uh, cyclic amines uh, they are called as cyclic hypnotic containing nitrogen then alcohols and aldehydes they can also act as sedatives and hypnotics uh, further uh, carbon carbon triple bonded compounds that is uh, acetylene derivatives they can also act as uh, sedatives and hypnotics then uh, miscellaneous types of sedatives and uh, hypnotics uh, they are inorganic salts some type of organic acids and organic esters they can also act as sedatives and hypnotics whereas uh, antihistamine and anti -chlorin, uh, chlorin, uh, agents they can also act as sedatives and hypnotics then organic cell phones, plant extracts, endogenous uh, substances, opioids, neuroleptics, uh, then uh, trifluoropromazines, they can also act in the same category of drugs. Then uh, recently some newer agents uh, in the category of sedatives and hypnotics, uh, they have been also studied. Now, uh, based on the mechanism uh, of action, uh, these uh, sedatives and hypnotics, they can be classified into these types of uh, drugs. Uh, one category based on mode of action is through uh, other mechanism, whereas most of uh, the active uh, hypnotic and sedatives uh, they uh, belong to the mechanism where drugs they will act through uh, gamma amino butyric acid uh, gamma a receptor chlorine channel complex 
so these are more active uh, drugs uh, and uh, the category of drugs which uh, come under this category uh, as far as mechanism of action is concerned they are benzodiazepines non benzodiazepines and barbiturates so uh, in the category of benzodiazepines uh, estrazolam having this type of uh, triazole structure then diazepam alprazolam all these uh, they belong to the category of benzodiazepine derivative so this is benzodiazepine structure benzodiazepine ring so all these they belong to benzodiazepine category of uh, sedatives and hypnotics the non benzodiazepine uh, type of sedatives they are zolpidem this is zolpidem having uh, this type of uh, heterocyclic ring then uh, zopiclone having this type of uh, pyrazine ring and pyridine ring and paprazine ring present in the compound then barbiturates uh, these types of compounds they are called as barbiturates butabarbital and secobarbital uh, they are the common examples of barbiturates similarly uh, melatonin receptor agonists uh, they are uh, remeritione uh, having this type of structure these are amides which are active as drugs then uh, tacimeltone meltion having uh, this type of amide linkage at the cyclopropyl unit so uh, these types of drugs they act through other mechanism that is uh, melatonin receptor agonist then orsin uh, receptor antagonist is uh, sovorelaxin Uh, having this type of structure this is having a triazole ring and a benzoxazole ring present uh, in the drug then antihistamine uh, type of drugs they can also act as uh, sedatives and hypnotics uh, citrazine is the most common example which we use uh, many times during uh, our infections this is the structure for citrazine having a paprazine ring present in that um, blastin and loratadine and adastine all these they are uh, acting as antihistamine drugs then uh, tricyclic antidepressant uh, most common example is uh, doxepine so this is the structure for doxepine uh, whereas this antihistamine blastin is antihistamine uh, having a benzamidazole ring uh, is the active part of the drug molecule then in abastin also we are having this type of heterocyclic structure now uh, the most important mechanism of action as i have told you uh, is in case of uh, gamma amino butyric acid that is uh, gaba system so uh, deficiency of uh, gaba activity in central nervous system uh, is responsible for these types of actions so as far as uh, uh, gaba is concerned gaba is the main inhibitory transmitter in the brain and it exerts its rapid inhibitory action mostly through gaba receptors and if we consider the structure of a gaba receptor uh, there are two types of gaba receptors uh, gaba receptor a and gaba receptor b and uh, most important one is gaba receptor a so uh, gaba receptor a is the target for many uh, an uh, an anxiolytic and sedative uh, hypnotic agents uh, like uh, benzodiazepines they follow this type of mechanism barbiturates they also follow uh, gaba receptor a mechanism zolpidem zalopilone aspizoclone steroids anti convulsants and many other type of drugs uh, they uh, will follow this mechanism of gaba receptor a 
so what these drugs do they bind to different binding sites of GABA receptor in the neural membrane in the central nervous system as far as GABA receptor is concerned GABA receptor A this exists as a heteropentomeric transmembrane so uh, there are five uh, the chambers you can say present in the gamma receptor A and uh, uh, these subunits they are alpha subunit, beta subunit, gamma, delta and beta and these five polypeptide subunits they are arranged around a central uh, chloride ion channel like this so uh, all these drugs they will uh, act uh, as uh, uh, antidepressant or uh, anti sedative or anti hypnotic agent uh, for example uh, barbiturates uh, they will act on the alpha and beta subunit of the uh, gamma receptor A whereas uh, other say BJD receptor uh, this will act uh, on the gamma uh, subunit of the uh, gamma receptor A. The diazepam will also act as uh, act at the alpha receptor. So like this uh, the uh, chlorine uh, channel it's a lig uh, ligand gated chlorine ion channel and uh, when this uh, chlorine ion channel is uh, activated then uh, chloride negative influx is increased and membrane becomes hyperpulverized uh, therefore this will uh, result in inhibition of the neurons then uh, the uh, subunit composition of the receptor uh, that uh, will show a great bearing on the response to the benzodiazepines and other ligands which are used uh, for uh, sedation and hypnotic activity. So uh, alpha, beta and gamma subunit they confer uh, benzodiazepine sensitivity to receptor whereas alpha and beta subunits they will confer barbiturate sensitivity to the receptors. So like this uh, based on uh, the activity of the different drugs towards the uh, GABA receptor A subunits there will be a uh, change in the influx of chloride, uh, chloride, uh, chloride ion uh, in the uh, chloride, ion, uh, chloride ion channel. Now, uh, most important among these sedatives and hypnotics, they are anti-anxiety agents. Uh, as we know, anxiety is uh, naturally occurring emotion, and uh, because of this, uh, the uh, response of the body to the uh, environmental st uh, stimuli. So, anxiety may be mild to moderate, and uh, this will increase the level of performance in the patient but if uh, the anxiety level it, uh, exceeds the toler uh, tolerability of a person then uh, that person may suffer from uh, anxiety disorder so uh, to suppress that uh, anxiety disorder uh, we are to give uh, these uh, sedatives or hypnotics an oxalytic or anti panic or anti anxiety agents uh, they are given uh, to reduce the uh, anxiety in the patients so uh, these medications they are used for treatment of anxiety disorder and related physiological and physical symptoms uh, the uh, anxiety may be uh, a generalized anxiety disorder so here uh, this is usually persistent in the patient and uh, it remains constant and the uh, patient could experience excessive anxiety for a long duration commonly over uh, six months period then uh, panic disorder panic di in the panic disorder the patient uh, suffers from panic attacks and uh, 
there is also a fear of repetitive attacks in these types of patients. So uh, they are sudden uh, upsurge in the anxiety level of the patient. Then social phobia. Uh, social phobia is uh, fear of uh, staging in social situations. Uh, these types of uh, people they will have a fear of stage you can say uh, during social events and uh, these fears are often unexplained and they also remain persistent in such type of people then uh, specific phobia uh, this is uh, persistent fear towards a specific object so uh, these uh, type of uh, disorders, uh, they are due to, uh, these uh, may be tangible or intangible in nature. Then post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, PTSD. PTSD is developed in a patient uh, due to severe trauma or uh, life-threatening event in his life, in his or her life. And uh, these specific symptoms, they include uh, flashbacks of the traumatic events during the encounter to the similar situation and the uh, patient will start avoiding these situations. Then is uh, OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So if a patient uh, is suffering from OCD, uh, then... Uh, that patient would experience compulsive impulses of removing an obsession. And one common example of uh, OCD is uh, that person would have compulsion or urge in sterilizing the environment to remove contamination. So if he is uh, suffering from obsession with impurities or contamination, then uh, some person uh, may have a, an obsession of orderliness that he would uh, manipulate the surrounding inclu uh, including visual presentation to ease their compulsions so all these types of uh, disorders uh, they are uh, called as an axiolytic disorders and uh, we are to give anti-anxiety agents to overcome all these types of disorders. So uh, based on uh, these uh, uh, anxiety disorders, uh, six types of anti-anxiety uh, medication can be given to the pa patient. One is antidepressant example is uh, fluoxetine, uh, sertraline and benzofexine, then benzodiazepine, uh, lorazepine, diazepam, alprazolam, all these uh, can be given, azapirones, uh, buspirone, gipirone or tendosprene, they can be given to the patients. Then anti-epileptic is uh, gabapentin, Pregabalin, uh, Tigabin, and Valproate, they can be given as the uh, anti anxiety agents. Antipsychotics, Olanzapine, and uh, Risperidone, they can be given as the drugs. Then uh, beta adrenoreceptor uh, antagonists, uh, propranolone, which is also used as antihypertensive drug, can be given to the patients. So these are the references which have been used in preparing this lecture. Thank you very much.